Greetings Marines, Fayot here and in this vid after public demand I am finally putting weapon mods in my demolisher grid. <laughs> Why did I decide to do this? Well I decided to do this because with the new auto cannon and the Vajra and some of the finer additions of explosive weapons on the demo in conjunction with precision rockets there is now a chance to really capitalize on area of effect damage coming from all sources. So since last night's stream went so well, playing like pretty much only insane with a demo with heavies that really put in work, like this autocannon guys, check out my modding guide, it's so good, it's, it's such a top tier weapon. I wanted to present something different, something a little bit more focused on the build in conjunction with a gun. If you get my meaning. So as you saw in the opening clip, this thing done correctly, they they can't move. There's pretty much nothing the fodder enemies can do. And having tried it on insane against the biggies, uh, neither do those. So if you want to have a really powerful gunner focusing on explosive heavies, this new build will do it for you. Let's see what's happening here. So this is the build. I'm using Astra. That doesn't matter. Use whatever you want. And the Thunderbolt Mark II. The Thunderbolt Mark II already modded. Anti-material break, polygonal rifling, quick charge armature. Anti-material break comes from playing point defense or form an attachment in the campaign. Please don't ask me 20 times in every vid, guys. Ask me, ask me something else. Ask me how I prefer pizza. Like, I don't like pineapple. I'm going to let you know right now. Spoilers. You can change this for any weapon that you consider will be ideal for your cause. You can go Vasra. You can go impact grenades, you can go RPG, you can go microburst, you can go whatever goes boom. Okay, but for me this is this is top shelf stuff. Like the, the Thunderbolt is insane. What do we do with the Demolisher's perk grid though? This is the really important stuff. And I'm going to explain my thought process behind what goes where. First and foremost, we're going to go precision rockets. One at a time. Loud and clear. Bigger and better, and fire and forget. Fire and forget is a queen killer 100%, and we want area based attacks to really, really hurt them. So, this 25% damage is pretty nutty when it comes to combination with our beautiful explosive weapons. Okay, with these things and force multiplier 1 plus 3, we're getting 40% ability damage and 40% radius this is a 15 second return on every single one of our precision rockets if we do not work with stacks of clear the room but we're not noobs so we're gonna you should know what stacks of clear the room do at this point increase damage and when you cast them in with quick and dirty and armed and dangerous you deal more ability and weapon damage and you reduce your cooldowns with the configuration we have here, using abilities will build the stacks and you cast them in with Wicked Dirty, either with other rockets or with Blast Wave. Make sure you hit as many enemies as possible per rocket because that will significantly reduce your CD and give you your rockets back. Unlike the Gunner's Grenade, the rocket does not have an in-between window for the stuns. You can stun lock them to poo with precision rockets. So the big is you have pretty much four stun attempts out of the box, three rockets and one blast wave and recycling in between them, you can keep them in a perpetual stun. If the rocket stun is initiated fast enough and from correct distance, so you don't end up killing yourself with the splash damage, the explosive ordnance weapon will also knock down, stumble and stun them so you have areas of effect like little clusters of effective damage at a decent distance dealing extreme high damage and debilitating the enemy from moving there are areas in the game like choke points long lines corridors where you can just see them crawl and i'm talking about the juicy one just the fodder the fodder will die anywhere the fodder dies that's what they do at this point in the game's lifespan. Like triple grenades from the gunner, the laser from the lancer, the precision rockets here, the new particle 
turret that is amazing on the technician and they can barely do anything. The phalanx now can stun them from a mile away with ordnance. Fodder is just there to be annoying. You need to be able to stun lock and control the biggies. And with this build, we're going to control them very, very nicely. Now, jackpot. Get this thing in here. No questions asked in this build. This is great because you're dealing damage with a lot of stuff in a big area consistently with both guns and abilities. And the demo has very specific advantages on that part. If I'm gunning, I can also rocket. If I'm reloading, I can also rocket. So the rockets do not interrupt the demo like the laser does the lancer. The demo can be perpetually executing commands. Blast will, will stop you for a sec, but it's a very, very instant cut. Okay. Next. Down and out. You deal 20% more damage to enemies that are stunned or knocked. You can stun, knock, and stumble them to kingdom come with this build. Like with the rockets and with your guns and the material break on your muzzle. So this is damage coming from pretty much every source. And uh, you're not the only person in the team who can do this, of course. Like your gunner can knock them down. Other people, like with Twilight and Anti-Material Break Sniper Rifles or Precision Rifles, can keep the knockdowns and the stunts and the stumbles coming. So this is going to come in clutch with extreme amounts of damage throughout the mission. Reactive Charges, you always get this on the demo. It doesn't only work when you get hit. It works when you dodge the last possible moment. So when you will dodge, you will proc a free blast wave that does not nullify your active blast wave and you will knock enemies down and create room for your team. Excellent utility, especially when you get revenge spawns and you get sandwiched. I can't tell you how many times I've saved my ass and my friend's asses with this thingy here. And now the start of the show. The Lancer Heavy Brick increases handling and magazine capacity for heavies by 10% and max ammo by 15%. You can go with the Demolisher Heavy if you want. Max ammo for heavy weapons by 20% and the reload rate by 15 For me, it's either 40 in the auto cannon without this or 44 with this. And uh, thus, last four segment of ammunition can be the, the kill on the... Prowler or the spitter or the burster that will reload your gun with jackpot. So why not have it here? You know, where the hell shouldn't? And to top it all off, go with the Molester Heavy Expertise. Increases the radius of heavy weapons by 15% and damage of heavy weapons by 10. For explosive guns, guys, I don't even need to explain what's happening here. Okay, bigger radius, more enemies get affected, more damage on everything, and... Ties into Fire and Forget. This build is uh, nuts. This build is nuts for the demo. Like, they gave us such a good heavy now. Initially, I was disappointed with the Vazra, but the Vazra has a spot as well. But the auto cannon with this configuration is so ridiculously powerful, you won't be believing yourself. It's, it's, it's wacky. And... Uh, I think I'm gonna get into the habit of making builds in conjunction with guns. Now until we get updates and news on what might be coming next. Let's hope something is coming next. So I'd like you very much to drop me a line here. Tell me what your ideas is on that. I always like to brainstorm. And of course, sub, like, share, hit the notification bell if you want to be notified about uploads and streams. I'm uploading stuff every single day, streaming three days a week. And if you really enjoy the work, appreciate the work here, and you want to see more of this, consider Patreon or get a membership on the channel because it helps tremendously and streamers have to eat as well. Until next time, be well, stay frosty, and always try for perfection, Marines. Cheers!